Welcome to The Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thank you for joining us. As always, you can listen right here at WJMM 99.1 FM in Central Kentucky uh, Radio. There are other ways you can listen. You can listen on their website, wjmm.com. Uh, go to the podcast tab and click on that tab in near the upper right. And then on the Love and Lordship links, you can listen to this message today and the previous two days. Or you can, there's others on there as well. Hope is here with my good friend Greg Horn. is always an excellent, uh, excellent uplifting message. Uh, Bill Reeser with Encounter. And there are several others. So I encourage you to do that. You can also find more about Love and Lordship and the Authority of Love on our website, loveandlordship.com. You click on the different, you can watch videos, you can click on podcasts, as well as read articles. As we continue in this new year with our goals, plans, and resolutions, if you haven't dropped them already, right? I want to smatter some stories of perseverance, character, faith, and hope that hopefully will inspire us to keep on keeping on. As I mentioned at the close of yesterday's program, I'm going to share a story today. And then again, on Thursday, I'll be sharing some stories. And in between, we'll continue to share the only place where we can find a hope that lasts. That is in Christ. Before we jump into our story, I want to remind you once again of our vision and mission statements here in this new year. I hope that you find they are helpful to you. They're rooted in in the God who never changes. Our vision statement at Love and Lordship is every life and relationship built on the love and lordship of Jesus Christ. Our mission statement, making disciples who make disciples in the love and lordship of Jesus Christ in every home, church, and beyond for his kingdom and glory. And now, today's story I have to share with you comes from Dr. Ralph Wilson, and it's very appropriate for what many, if not all of us, are facing as we have moved into another year with all the hopes and dreams and all the struggles and uncertainties. He uses an observation of a little mouse couple or mice couple. I don't know how you'd say that. (laughs) Check out more Dr. Winter's stories at joyfulheart.com. Joyfulheart.com. I thought this was so good. And and I hope you find it helpful as well. The title of a story of his story is Don't Cling to the Firewood. They're just a young couple, I can tell. These mouse holders who have taken up residence in the wood pile are just starting out in life. They've built a nest under the pile of oak firewood I am loading into the back of our station wagon. We had our first frost a few days ago and had spent several days winterizing our house. So had this mouse couple. At the bottom of the wood pile, their nest would be dry and warm in all but the wettest of storms, ready for the young ones that would surely be coming in spring. I think of my wife and me in our first apartment many years ago. So excited, so optimistic. These are tiny mice, equipped with miniature jumping legs, their little bodies only two, two and a half inches long, if you don't count the tail. Must... I must seem like a huge giant as I deconstruct their carefully built lives one log at a time. I feel sorry for them, such cute little creatures, so hopeful for the future, yet so filled with terror at what is just now happening to them. What's going on, dear? The mouse bride cries. I don't know, her husband answers. Nothing like this has ever happened before. He's wrong, of course. Change happens constantly. But thankfully, it's not too often that our entire lives are altered forever by external events. A few weeks after my bride and I had moved into our first apartment, I received a draft notice. Greetings from the President of the United States. Yes, greetings to you too, Mr. President. Our carefully constructed lives suddenly took a sharp turn. You've had some of those sharp turns too. The death of someone very close to you. Divorce and a broken up family, loss of a job, failure of a business, an illness or injury. And this is my addition, Greg's addition. For me, it's the aging and obvious ailing of my wonderful father as he gets closer and closer to his eternal home and reuniting with my precious departed mother. Suddenly, and back to the article again, suddenly life is not the same and never will be again. Everything's different. And we try to cope, sometimes in healthy ways, sometimes in self-destructive ways. I keep loading the firewood into the back of the wagon. 
I'm about to stack it higher yet when I see one of the tiny mice clinging to a piece of firewood in the back of the car. Another few seconds and he would have been crushed. I pick him up by his long tail and set him on the ground and go back to get more logs. When I return, he is still at the same place on the ground where I put him, stunned by these events, barely able to get out of harm's way. Aren't we so mouse-like sometimes? Life goes on. The props change, sometimes all too often. We're so tempted to cling to the props as they are being dragged off the set. And sometimes we're hurt because of our inability to let go. So attached to the accoutrements of the past that it's impossible for us to welcome the future. Change requires courage. Great helpings of it. My mind goes to Joshua in the Bible. For nearly 40 years, he has been an understudy to the great leader Moses. Now Moses is dead. Leadership is thrust fully upon Joshua. Ahead is the Jordan River, running at flood stage, and beyond that, the fortified cities of Canaan, the promised land that seems so elusive. Talk about change. Joshua has change swirling all around him. And God speaks to him a word. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. Our mouse couple looks up as their world is crumbling. One by one, the logs that comprise their shelter are disappearing, and soon only open sky is above. What do you do? Do you cling to the firewood and risk being crushed by it? Or do you cling to God's promise to you? God has promised to be with you wherever you go. He has promised never to leave you or forsake you. Remember yesterday's uh, message and the text from John 14 and 16? What he asks of you is faith to overcome your terror, courage to meet your discouragement, and confidence to draw on his strength. Change is a constant. My addition here, that's why they call it change, right? Right? No matter of our lives will endure, no, I'm sorry, no part of our lives will endure unchanged for more than a few years, a few decades at most. But the Lord our God is unchangeable. He is forever. You can count, you can count on him. You can put down your roots into him, knowing that in this way, you will never be utterly uprooted again. I think of Mr. and Mrs. Mouse. My heart goes out to them. I've been where they are, and so have you. And I hope that even as I'm writing these words, even as I'm sharing these words now, they are dragging their nest into another shelter in the woods to keep them dry and warm this winter. I hope that Mr. Mouse has finally got over his shock and got with the program. Older now, and wiser they are. And if I could offer just one word of advice for them and for you and for me, it would be this. Don't cling to the firewood. Let me give you some food for thought as we wrap up today's message. What are you clinging to that you need to let go of? You step fully as you step fully into 2023. Let me flip it a bit. What are you trying to discard that you may not need to hold on to, as this is often a source of pain and struggle as well? What does it mean to you, or does it mean anything to you, that God is unchangeable? Have you found comfort comfort in his immutability, his never-changing nature? Because you're going to have change. Here's some action items. How can you handle the change or the sameness that stays with us occasionally and prosper in 2023 according to his kingdom, eternal focus from yesterday's message? Spend time with him in his word and prayer daily. Take time to listen. Meditate. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. He will if you're, if you're willing. Three, if married, and not already doing so, begin praying and doing devotions and a Bible study together. Number four, if not already involved, find a small group for study, 
encouragement, and accountability to help you through the change or those things that you wish would change but haven't or aren't changing. Trust the Lord to show you which. And number five, be sure you have at least three people in your life beyond the usual marriage and family relationships. Number one, a Paul to mentor you. Number two, a Barnabas to walk with beside you. Ladies, a Pauline and a, what what would be a good female derivative of Barnabas, okay? Barbie, (laughs) okay, I know where that may go, but yeah, a Barnabas or a Barbie to walk beside you and encourage you and you them. And number three, a Timothy or Timothina that you can mentor and pour into. Join us tomorrow as we continue to look forward to all Christ has in store and the hope, peace, joy, and love that he brings to us that will never fail. And because of his unfailing love, how we can know that he is our only hope. He is the only peace and joy that lasts. Join us and invite family, friends, loved ones, even enemies. I have to say that every time, right? Because that's what we're called to do, to love all others, even our enemies. Ask them to join us so they can hear, I hope, messages of the gospel of Jesus Christ that will help change their lives. Don't cling to the firewood, right? Now, remember, you can get our book, Amazon.com. Look for The Authority of Love, second edition. Spell out S-E-C-O-N-D. Don't do two in D. And you can find it there. You can also go to loveandlordship.com to find a lot more uh, information and articles, podcasts, and videos, and a way to give. If the Lord is leading you to give to Love and Lordship, would you be generous to do so? Follow through on that. Click on the Give tab in the upper right corner of that of that uh, web page, loveandlordship.com, and then follow through the prompts. It'll take you a minute or two. But if it's not us, keep praying. Ask the Lord to show you where he would have you give so that you can impact others for his kingdom and bring him glory. He'll do that, and he will bless you as you do so. You can also give uh, on uh, mobily if you go to cash.app or cash app, go to cash app, go to cash.app forward slash dollar sign love and lordship all together with both L's capital. That's cash.app forward slash dollar sign love and lordship with both L's in caps and all together. We also take checks. You can send it by mail to love and lordship to 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. That's Mail it to Love and Lordship to 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. All donations are tax deductible, and thanks for your support as the Lord may lead. I always like to share what I mention once again. I'm asking for him and his kingdom. If it's not us, keep praying and be obedient to where he would have you give and partner with. Don't forget, I mentioned this earlier, but you can find more on WJMM.com. My good friend, my best friend, Greg Horn, does Hope Is Here. Another great friend, Bill Reeser, does Encounter. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. And as I just mentioned, if you will stay tuned, you will hear Encounter with Bill Reeser. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of of love.